Hey, what's up guys? My name is The Cherno. Welcome back to my C++ series. So it's been a really long time since the last C++ episode, but that does not mean this series is over. Oh, oh no, we are in fact just getting started. There's just so much in C++ to cover. And in fact, it's now 2020, which means C++ 20 is on the horizon. And of course, I'm gonna have a bunch of videos on that coming in the future. Today though, we're gonna be talking about something that is less a language feature of C++ and more of just a design pattern. And that is a singleton. What is a singleton? Why do I care? Why do I wanna use it? When do I wanna use it? All of that stuff, that's gonna be in today's video. But first, I wanna thank our sponsor for this video, Hostinger. Now, everyone needs web hosting of some sort, whether you're an artist, a programmer, anyone who just wants a website on the internet or some kind of server technology to run code that they've written, you're gonna need some sort of web hosting. And my favorite company for that by far is Hostinger. And let me tell you why. First of all, I absolutely love their control panel. So many web hosting companies have these extremely complicated, outdated web 2.0 looking like GUIs and all of that to set up your website, which is just ridiculous. If you just wanna install a quick WordPress site, which I think that honestly, a lot of people should just do and that'll be, that'll be fine for them. It's as simple as just going to their beautifully designed control panel and just setting that up in just a couple of clicks. And in fact, they have built-in diagnostics to help you in case something goes wrong. Hosting a, are by far the simplest in that regard. They're also extremely well priced. And by extremely well priced, I mean, they're offering you 91, up to 91% off. That's like, I mean, what even is that? If you sign up using the link in the description below with my code, 91% off web hosting, really? I mean, to be honest, they're just they're just one of my favorite sponsors to work with because it's just such a good product and it's so, so, so affordable. Go ahead and sign up using that link in the description to get up to 91% off all of their products. Make 2020 the year that you finally get that website up and running because because it's time. And of course, a huge thank you to Hostinger for being a wonderful sponsor and sponsoring this video. So, singletons, what is the deal with singletons? Just left the monitor like in the frame. Like, what's going on? Sure has been a while with these C++ videos. Okay, so I'm gonna keep this real simple as I like to do. A singleton is basically a single instance of a class that you just have around and that's it. So it's a class where you only intend to have a single instance of that class or struct because classes and structs are like pretty much the same thing in C++. Now, object oriented programming in general, the whole benefit of having these objects, these classes is the fact that you can instantiate them multiple times. It's not just all about being like, okay, I'm gonna write all of my code and then I'm just gonna instantiate this object and it's, that's it. Like that, I'm not gonna instantiate more than one instance of this object. A Little bit weird, a little bit counterproductive. Why do I even need an object in the first place? And that's the thing. If you are using a singleton, it's quite easy to just look at it and be like, well, this does not need to be a class because if you only have a single instance of an object, then what you really have is just one singular set of data and then probably some functionality to go along with it. So in other words, we have our class members which represent our data and then we have the other thing, which is all of the functions that represent, you know, operations usually performed on that specific set of data or otherwise to interact with that data. Those are kind of the two blobs we end up with. And if that is the case, if we don't intend to instantiate multiple instances of a particular class, and thus, you know, we would want it's their own kind of version of the data upon which those operations will kind of be performed on, not to complicate things, but if we don't need that, then why, do, why would we even use a class? Now, Java and C Sharp, they're inherently object-oriented languages. They're, they kind of force that upon you. Specifically Java, I'm gonna just, gonna just pick on Java for a minute. In Java, everything has to be a class. You can't have code outside of a class, which means that if you want this kind of static, we'll say functionality, where you don't actually need instantiation, then you have to just make static members in your class and a static, a static group of functions. Now we in C++ are not really bound by those rules because we don't have to write a class. We can just have functions that are, you know, part of some kind of namespace or are even in the global namespace that do not belong to any kind of class. 
And furthermore, we can do the same thing with variables. We can have completely global variables, or we can have static variables that are tied to a particular translation unit, or in other words, a particular CPP file. C++, incredibly flexible language, lets us do whatever we want. But the singleton design pattern, where does that come into play? Singleton's super useful for when we essentially want to have functionality that applies to some kind of global set of data that we just want to potentially repeatedly reuse. So a few really basic examples of singletons, a random number generator class. We just want to be able to query it and be like, give us a random number. We don't want to have to instantiate it, go through all of that stuff, no, because we potentially want to instantiate it once so that it actually seeds that random number generator and sets up any other kind of auxiliary um, things, I guess, that it actually needs. But then we want to just call some kind of function that will give us a random number based on what we've initialized it with. Simple as that. Another good example is something like a renderer. A renderer, very commonly, is a very global thing. We typically don't have multiple instances of a renderer. We have a renderer to which we submit all of these rendering commands, and then it just kind of, well, it renders things for us. If we break this down into like OpenGL, we're literally calling OpenGL calls through our renderer potentially. That all in itself is a global set of functions. That's not something that relate to some kind of object at all. They're just C style functions. No classes, nothing to do with that at all. So what we want potentially is just to be able to almost use the class as a namespace to just call certain functions. And that's where this whole singleton thing gets a little bit messy and why I really wanna dive into some code and take a look. It's because ultimately speaking, singletons can just behave like namespaces. Singleton classes can just behave like namespaces. There's nothing to actually tie them to that word class. I'm gonna say this once very clearly. Singletons in C++ are just a way to organize a bunch of global variables and static functions that sometimes may or may not act upon those variables into one kind of organized blob that is essentially under a single namespace. That is what that is what a singleton is. Now, of course, it can be flexible around those rules, but that's basically it. So let's just dive in and take a look at some examples, how we can write a singleton and some other things along the way. So let's start out with a really, really basic example of a singleton. We'll just write a class, we'll call it singleton, and then I'll kind of explain everything that makes this singleton a singleton. So to start off with, we don't want to have a constructor because if we have a constructor that is just public, then it's going to allow people to instantiate it. So what you would typically do is just mark this constructor as private, meaning that this class cannot be instantiated outside of within this class. The next step is to provide a way to actually access this class statically. So we would need some kind of static function, which returns either a reference or a pointer of this particular type. And you typically call it something like get instance or just get for short. And then what this needs to do is return some kind of instance of singleton. Now, because it is a singleton, there is obviously just one instance of this class for your entire application. So the way that you design this is completely up to you. I'll show you a few ways. A more traditional way is just to simply make a static instance of that singleton class somewhere here inside your private members. So in other words, I would just make a static singleton called something like S underscore instance. However, because it is static, it needs to actually be defined somewhere. So in some kind of CPP file, I would now need to take this singleton and actually define it like so, like any kind of static member. And then once I've done that inside my get function, I can simply return this S instance. This is kind of a, a very popular singleton pattern. This is probably something you would do, especially in a language such as Java, you wouldn't exactly need this definition, but you would set it up this way. And what this means is that if I have a main function over here, I can simply access that singleton by just calling singleton get just like that. And then from within there, if I had some kind of function, like a void function or something like that, then I can simply just call the function on that singleton instance, and there we go. I can statically access this singleton as if there was just one instance of it, because I can just use this get function. Now, semantically, this does have a few flaws. For example, I can just take this singleton get function and assign it into a completely separate singleton instance. So I can do something like this. What I probably meant to write in this case is a singleton reference like this, because I can absolutely do this and then use this instance over here like so. However, if I accidentally forget to do this, what will actually happen is all of this data inside the singleton will be copied. So in fact, I've created an additional 
singleton instance. And if I actually had data here, like I had some kind of member here, then of course that data would be copied into this new object. And that of course is not what a singleton is. It defeats the entire purpose of a singleton. I just want one instance. So to combat this, what you would typically do is simply delete the copy constructor. Because if I come up here and I just mark the copy constructor as delete like this, right? Then it won't let me do this. I have to actually write this as a reference or something like that. Using auto is also a completely valid thing to do. But again, remember that you need to explicitly write reference here and then you can use it like so. Okay, cool. So this is a completely arbitrary example. Hopefully it makes sense. Let's deal with something a little bit more real. What I'm gonna do is instead of this being a singleton class, which means nothing, I'm gonna try and make a random number generator class. So I'll just copy and paste all of this stuff and then I'll just apply this over here. And let's just say that I want to write a function that generates a random float. So I'll call this float float. Now, this is not a video about random number generation. So what we'll do is we'll kind of just have our random generator uh, float here. We'll just set it to 0.5 and that is what this function will return. But pretend that of course it would it, it's a real function that randomly generates a number and then returns it. Through this design, if I want to actually generate a random number, all I have to do is call random get and then float and I'll get a random float presumably. And I can assign this like so, float number equals random get float. Now this is totally legit and it's a great use case of singletons because you don't need to have multiple instances of a random number generator, potentially. I mean, of course you could justify that, but for this case, let's just say we have a very simple random number generator. It gets seeded in the beginning potentially, and then just reuse throughout our program. Simple as that, we don't need anything complex. Let's kind of break this down and take a look at what it actually consists of. So we have a deleted copy constructor, we have this get function, and then we have our actual kind of meet. This is the actual function that returns a class member. Now this is one of the things that make the singleton a singleton. The fact that this is an actual class and it can have class members, such as this random generator. If this just returned some kind of static value, like this, then of course it could simply be marked as static and we wouldn't in fact need a singleton at all. But the thing that makes a singleton a singleton is the fact that it is in fact a class. So it can support all of these class features such as class members. You could definitely look at this and see it as being annoying because instead of just calling random float, which might be desirable, I have to call random get and then float, which of course just adds some more complexity. I could kind of fix this by just bringing this out and being like auto random equals random get and then from there calling random float. And this might be something I do if I have this whole kind of function scope where I'm just gonna be using this random number generator. However, of course that is an extra line of code and it is a little bit annoying. So how do we get it to this state and then obviously still keep it as a singleton with class members? Well, what I like to do is simply make another function. So I have my kind of implementation of what float is. It returns a random generator. What I'll do is I'll move this actual function into the private section here and I'll rename it. So I'll call it something like float internal or float, some people call it float impl for implementation. I like to just stick an I at the front. Now this does kind of make it look like an interface potentially if you're using that convention, but I like using it for these functions because I'm basically saying that this is the internal float function. And then what I'll do out here is write a static float function. So this will be static float float. And then what this will do is simply return get dot I float. So I have this kind of indirection here. Obviously once all of this gets inlined by the compiler, you really shouldn't see any kind of performance hit or anything from all these function calls because in the end, we're just kind of retrieving the value 0.5 and that's it. But what that means for us is that we can in fact run this code here. And if I just print this out to the console, you can see that I do get my value 0.5 and everything is fine. And I haven't had to call get at all. So that's just like a little hack that I like to use. Another route you could go is simply just not even worrying about this indirection because all we're trying to do here is return a value. You can just return get dot M underscore random generator. That way you don't need this internal function at all. But of course, in a lot of cases, you probably wanna keep this internal functionality. And the benefit here obviously is that since it is not a static function, it has access to all of the class members without having to like retrieve, you know, the actual instance or anything like that. So that's another benefit. Now, the last thing that I wanna show is this kind of get function here, because the way that we've written it 
right now means that we actually need a static instance over here in the class members, and then we need to define it in some kind of translation unit. That's a little bit cumbersome. I don't like to do it that way. A better way to do this is to actually move this static declaration inside this static function. So what I can do is get rid of this entirely as well as this, and then simply in this get function, I can write static random s underscore instance. And in fact, I, I can just call it instance if I wanted to, that's totally fine as well. So what this is doing is actually having a static variable inside a function, which means that this still is in fact in static memory. Once the get function gets called for the first time, it will be instantiated. And then on subsequent times, it's just in static memory. So it'll just be referenced. It's basically the same as what we did before, but you can see that it's a lot cleaner because I don't need to have anything here at all. And functionally it's identical. If I come down over here and I want to call random float, which of course goes through that get function, then obviously I'm going to get the exact same result. So that's pretty much all there is to a singleton. You probably want to do a few other things to clean it up and make it a little bit better. For example, you might want to delete the assignment operator as well, but I've just kind of simplified this and made it a little bit easier to understand. So to summarize, the core of a singleton is this kind of functionality here, where I have a single instance that I create once, which in this case happens as soon as it's used for the first time. And then the lifetime of this singleton would simply be the lifetime of your application. And then once I have this singleton, I can simply write any, any amount of non-static methods and access them via this get function. Or if I want, I can kind of remove one level of indirection and write these static functions, which internally just map to member functions, which can access member data and all of the functionality of classes. Now, the last thing I wanna show you guys is what happens if I just don't treat this as a class? What's the point of even having a class in C++? Why can't I just write a namespace, I'll call it random class in this case, that just has all this functionality? And the answer is you can. I can just write this and I can write a static float called s underscore random generator and you know set this equal to 0.5 and then have a function called float like this static float float which then returns s random generator there's no functional difference between having these two and in fact if i just call random class float here you'll see that it's identical i mean i do have this extra variable which is just tied to a namespace instead of a class i do kind of lose this private public functionality but you can get around that. If I had a header file, which just simply contained a declaration for this function, and then I had a C++ file, which implemented the function and also had a static version of this, then I've effectively hidden it from other files. But again, there's no real downside to using a class. And of course it does let you keep it a little bit more organized. Not to mention that I do in fact lose the functionality of being able to assign the instance of this class to like a variable like I did before. Okay, so hopefully that kind of gives you a little bit more of an example. It's sometimes hard to just sit here and talk at you guys, even though I have so much I wanna say, obviously a lot easier to actually dive in and take a look at the code itself. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. Don't forget that I do have a Patreon as well, patreon.com forward slash the channel. Huge thank you to everyone who helps support this channel. Please let me know if you wanna see more kind of design pattern videos like this singleton one. If you have any thoughts about singletons, leave them in the comment section below so that we can have a nice discussion. Let me know if you use them, when you use them, what you use them for, if you don't like using them and why, all of that stuff, leave it in the comment section below. Huge thank you again to Hosting for sponsoring this video, guys. Check that web hosting out up to 91% off. It's incredible. I will see you next time. Goodbye.